Recently, we defended the empire against the Muslim invasion and reconquered the territories of the Bosporus Kingdom. And so welcome to part 4 of my Eastern Roman Empire campaign. After listening to my subjects, I further increased the development of the infrastructure. Especially the province of Italy really started to flourish, mainly the imperial city. Mainly the eternal city, which was a real blessing to see her rise once again. A small province in Greece joined a group of Spanish rebels, but was quickly reintegrated. At the request of the Senate, I made the kingdom of Bohemia to a permanent tributary and ordered my steward to max out the development in Constantinople. To make further conquests easier, I integrated the tradition by the sword in our culture. Write in the comments if you know another useful tradition our empire definitely needs. I decided that it was time to reconquer further parts in Italy. During the war against Pisa, Anthemius II ascended the throne. Due to the death of his father, he ensured that the good traits stayed in the family. You know, incest, wincest. <laughs> the war against Pisa was won. And before continuing with further wars in Italy, I really pushed the development of my provinces. I did this by building new cities or just increasing the level of buildings so that the Roman infrastructure could become what it once was, or even more. Then started the final push on Italy. First conquering Ravenna and Pisa, then destroying the barbarians that settled near the Alps. And so Italy was free from barbarians. My African vassals had conquered some more land, reaching deep in the desert. I mean, I appreciate the effort, but... I was planning to grant this region's independence again, as they were not at all profitable and really useless actually. Well, I built new universities, and since the empire had been stable for the last couple years, I decided to start the revenge against Arabic kingdoms, something heavily demanded by many senators. And so shortly after, the first victory was mine. But this was only the small beginning. In the east, however, the Gupada Empire was about to form India. And not gonna lie, that would be so freaking cool. Like, I never saw that happen. And that would be so cool to see, honestly. I hope they make it. And afterwards, I probably wish I never spoke these words because they'll be freaking strong. Besides, I started with the conversion of the Bosporus Kingdom back to Hellenism which will allow me to officially bring back the original Bosporus Kingdom. In the meantime, the governor of Italy had turned his back on Roman culture. And so I could press Germanic tribes to invade him for me. Which is a really cool feature if you ask me. While the Germans fought for me in Italy, I conquered my way towards Spain in Africa. After succeeding, I decided that it was time to really start the revenge campaign against the Arabic tribes and kingdoms. Several battles followed. Suddenly, Anthemius died and Petros ascended the throne. While managing my realm, I realized something weird. Why the hell am I owning this territory up here? Italy? <laughs> what the hell am I doing in Germany? Bruh. I continued and won the war against several Arabic kingdoms. After that, I granted independence to the first tribe in African territory, as I really don't need more control over desert. I mean, there's literally nothing else. Hello there. Then, a minor war in the east of Italy followed, and after that I directly continued conquering in Africa. This time, however, mostly to beautify the borders. Valid reason, right? Time passed and another conquest in Arabia followed. While I was busy in the east, in the west, Gaul had risen back to power, spreading Gallo-Roman culture in the area, and also conquered some territories in Spain and Africa. Really cool neighbors. On top of that, they were distant heirs to the Sosois. The campaign in Arabia was rough, and Petrus closed his eyes forever during this war. Probably murdered, so his brother and brother-in-law, <laughs> incest we insist, became emperor. Look at this guy's stats. You can't say anything against it. That's the proof it works. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Not much later, and the war was won. And already a third 
of Arabia was mine. Another conquest deeper in former Sassanid lands followed, and the victory in this war brought us closer to the Indian Empire. I will just call them Indian Empire as they more or less are the Indian, Indian Empire now. I mean, come on. <laughs> While further campaigning in Arabia, I suddenly received shocking news, to say the least. Okay, now we're fucked. Oh my freaking god. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that was unexpected, honestly. I, I didn't expect that at all. Okay. Well. A war and uprisings in my own land followed this message. Thankfully, my legions had no problem dealing with the peasants and could quickly join the fight in the east. To make matters worse, the emperor died, making Job. Yeah, that's that's his real name. His successor. Now that's my job. <laughs> I'm so funny, guys, I'm sorry. I first ensured the succession. I think we all know where this is going. Unfortunately, I lost the war against India, as they just overran my lands and conquered my territories. But I managed to win the war in Arabia. At the same time, in the west, more Roman empires popped up. Nice. I decided to build a statue in Constantinople for... Yeah, no valid reason, but... But it's not my job to care. <laughs> okay. Even though we lost against India, the last words were not spoken yet. So see you in the probably final episode of this series.